I'm Heidi Clark with the Essex Reach Hoarder, and we're here this afternoon at the Dark Room Gallery in downtown Essex Junction with Irene Renner, who won her Democratic primary for the new um, Chittenden North Senate District. Politically, you're seen as more of an independent. Um, it, you can't really be pigeonholed into one party or the other. Um, how do you feel about how the primary system is run and why did you end up running as a Democrat? The primary system in many states requires that a person pick a party if they want to be part of that election and it was very important to me to have a chance and a reason to go knocking on doors as soon as the race had started so I chose to put myself in a box that box was the Democratic Party um, I have been to Democratic Party meetings over the years um, not so much when I was a nonpartisan office holder because I really thought it was important to go to lots of different parties and not just stick to one party I wanted to hear from all voices and um, at, at this point in the race I have chosen the Democratic Party what's important to me right now is this idea of choice it's on the ballot in November for women um, for all actually to vote on but uh, the Reproductive Freedom Act um, Reproductive Liberty I believe it's called amendment is uh, mostly directed to allowing women to have choice into how many children they have when they have them if they have them at all and and that's a very important issue to me and uh, so I'm, I'm absolutely fine in this race running as a Democrat although if I didn't have to pick a party I would have been very tempted to run as an independent because I've been a nonpartisan office holder here for 12 years and I really like not having a label put on me because that all that engenders tribalism um, just going to someone's door and saying I'm running as a such and such and some people understandably vote party line in the other direction and so they're not going to be as open to hearing me maybe as if I were running as an independent. You're going to be representing a, di a district very rural and in a lot of ways very different from what you're used to. Um, in rural Vermont, gun rights are huge. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand? My feelings on gun rights have not changed from when I was on the select board here and we talked about the firearms discharge ordinance. Um, it's important to me that people who have a tradition of hunting and target shooting are able to maintain that. Um, there is plenty of room in this new district for people to have the backyard shooting ranges. We just ask that they do it safely. Um, hunters get a lot of training, I'm aware, before they get their licenses. Um, all of that's well and good, and I don't think Vermont has the type of issues, or at least we have not seen as many mass shootings in Vermont as we have elsewhere in the country, but we don't want to invite that either. Um, so I think it's prudent to make sure there's background checks, perhaps an age limit. I defer to the people in this district to tell me what makes sense. And I've talked to NRA members and other folks who've said to me they will come testify when there are bills under consideration that have to do with gun rights, and I defer to their expertise. They also don't want to see grocery stores or churches or schools shot up. We have come to that realization at their front doors on many, many, many occasions. Um, so I would tap them for where that line is appropriate to draw, since they know better than I do. Um, but I think it's really important. They're at, they have a seat at the table. As I have a feeling everybody on any bill should be heard so that we have a diversity of opinions before we set up a law that applies to everyone. Um, I feel extremely strongly, and this was one of the problems that I noticed with some of the meetings that I watch was the testimony from Republicans because they were in the minority or people who didn't want the separation bill were not even invited to give testimony and I think that's absolutely inappropriate. I think we have the best bills when everyone gets a voice, we show humility and respect to those we disagree with and we help each other tweak the bills before they come, become law to ensure that everyone can live with them because no one has all the answers, and one party doesn't have all the answers. 
and one person who likes a bill doesn't have all the answers, but together we can form bills that all of us can agree. Perhaps disagree about the final outcome, but that all of us can have input in and hopefully make better than the drafts that come out of a committee. What are your plans going forward for November and a race against someone who's better known in most of the new district? Yeah, Leland has been a rep for four years for a Grand Isle West Milton district. Okay. So I don't know how well he's known throughout this Chittenden North territory, Understood. which so includes Fairfax, Milton, Westford, and rural Essex. So the new district is also new to him? I think in Somewhat. large part, yeah. So your primary race was fairly contentious. How do you hope to reach those voters that voted for your opponent? And On policy issues, my opponent and I are not that far apart. Both of us are concerned about keeping Vermont affordable, making housing more plentiful, for example. Um, so I, I don't see that there's a big leap. Oh, and of course, women's choice. That's very important to a lot of the folks who supported one or, or both, one or one of us or the other. Um, so I, I think policy-wise, there's not a big leap there at all, especially since my opponent in this new race voted against Proposition 5 as a legislator this past February. So I think that's a record that he's going to run on, and I will certainly be running on a very different platform of assuring that women have choice, and that no matter what the Supreme Court does, Vermont's constitution is updated to ensure we have that right forever. What other differences do you see between you and Leland? We are running under different party banners. Um, the Republican Party and Democratic Party in this country have very different philosophies. Um, I think people tend to gravitate to one side or the other, maybe naturally or just out of habit, but um, there are a number of independent voters in Vermont, and so those especially are the people that I will speak to and continue to ask what their concerns are and address them the best I can um, by pointing mostly to my record. Um, this was my 14th election win in the town of Essex. Um, I fought for many issues that have to do with transparency and fairness and common sense, and those things cross party lines. Can you show us your basket of pinwheels, Irene? I can, or I can show you one individually up close. This is uh, what I chose to make my sort of campaign logo for this particular race. Because these four towns don't have a lot that they've done in common in the past, they all are quite rural. Um, the people in them have very similar concerns, I found out from talking to many of them. Um, but what I wanted was a unifying symbol. So this idea of the four towns turning together toward the future, each of these petals of the windmill has a name of one of these towns on it. Each petal is a different color to signify that we are unique towns, but we're all turning toward the future together. And in addition, I am turning their ideas into actions as I speak to them and as I run for office and hopefully succeed. So your past campaigns, um, have been just the town of Essex. What do you see different campaigning in that way and the way you have to campaign in a four town rural district? Certainly the number of people was almost exactly the same and to me that's a real neat coincidence. There are 22,000 people in the former town of Essex, as you've mentioned, and there are 22,000 people in this new district. Um, that made me think, hey, I can spend the summer and meet most of those people, <laughs> except that there's a lot of distance involved and even some altitude when you get into places like Fairfax. And um, so that was kind of eye-opening for me and also fun to just explore new streets and just new scenic views and vistas. And um, one of the things, you know, you have these discoveries, right, when you haven't spent a lot of time in a place. I realized that Lake Road in Milton not only starts at Lake Arrowhead, but it ends quite a few miles later at the shores of Lake Champlain. And to me, that was a complete revelation. And um, I just was bowled over by that. And it was a beautiful sunset the night that I ended. <laughs> 
lake road canvassing and, and that was a lot of fun. Another thing I noticed was that um, from many venues in this new district you can see the Georgia mountain wind towers and, and that's kind of neat because I, I'm in Fairfax far-flung Fairfax and I'm looking and oh there are the wind towers and I'm over in Milton oh I see the wind towers and I'm in Westford and I see the wind towers and it's kind of a reminder to me in every single one of those places that we do have certain things that we can see ahead like the challenge of preserving the landscapes we have those beautiful landscapes in this district and yet how do we sustain the energy needs of our populations because that's becoming more and more concerning as fuels of different types become more scarce um, and you know, there's pressure all the time to put up more panels or put up more wind turbines so that, that was a good reminder to me of the challenges ahead and it was facing me at so many different points of the campaign. Um, okay. Speaking of challenges, what are your plans to address affordability in housing? I think we need to look to places where housing for all has been very successful. And a lot of that is in Europe and even Canada. They've done a lot of congregate housing, a lot of um, cooperative housing that are public-private partnerships. And they've had great success with that. I think um, if the state of Vermont just hands money to developers, there may not be enough regulation or we as legislators need to step up and make sure there's a regulation to have proper inspections and proper um, constraints around those developers to make sure that the buildings that are put up are not done in a half-baked manner because there are way too many congregate housing um, installments that we've seen even here recently in the village slash city um, that within a few years are showing signs that they were not properly constructed so I don't want the state of Vermont or the feds or anybody else pouring money into housing that's not going to last and it's going to cause more problems for its occupants than it should be, ever be expected to. So I think the key is to, to set up some really smart constraints and um, goals for the housing and, it, and have um, penalties attached. Because there are several developers in this district that are notorious for putting up housing that is not, that, well, that's substandard, put it that way. And um, I think that's, that's the key. Um, because it's a mostly rural district, I think Preserving the working landscapes, preserving the scenic views, preserving the open spaces is critical. So the development needs to happen in areas of density. And um, those, those dense areas may be pushed out a little bit, but I don't want to see the sprawl that we all know can happen so easily. Uh, thank you, Irene. We um, hope to be able to interview Leland soon. This is Heidi Clark with the Essex Retorter. We just interviewed Irene Renner here at the Darkroom Gallery in Essex Junction. Thank you.